Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here and in today's video we are going to be looking ahead to the year 2023 and what this brand new year might have in store for the Pokemon franchise. I'm going to make some predictions, we're going to talk about past precedent and what it might help inform us for in the future. It's going to be a fun time. But before we get into that discussion, I just wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, for those who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and pick up some new skills. Got a specific skill you're trying to learn? Well, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that are going to match your interests and goals. It's an excellent way to invest in yourself and your personal growth. Interested in video creation, mastering social media use in this ever-expanding internet world, or the online gaming space? Skillshare has courses that would be perfect for helping you learn new and exciting things about them all. Recently, I've learned a lot about making my room and living space stand out more through Lauren Cox's class on interior design basics. I wanted to switch some things up, it was getting kind of boring in here, and her tips were incredibly helpful in making my space better reflect who I am and who I want to be and be more productive as well. If you're interested, head down to the description below because the first 1,000 people who use my link will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Thanks so much to Skillshare for the support. Now, last year was big for Pokemon. We not only did we get Legends Arceus at the beginning of the year, but they capped it off with a brand new generation, Scarlet and Violet, taking place in the Paldea region and brand new open world Pokemon experience for the first time ever. This built upon previously designed things in Sword and Shield, the wild area being the key, and the open zones of Legends Arceus. Clearly, Game Freak was experimenting with open world in previous games and fully implemented a a new vision for Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. And while reviews range of how effective this open world design was, how good the games are, most Pokemon fans seem to be taking away a lot of positives with these games. And that's a good thing for Pokemon because these games are probably going to be the main focus of 2023 as well. I fully expect that in the next month or two months, we're going to get the official announcement of a major DLC expansion for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I was wrong last year. Last year, in my 2022 prediction video, I thought we were going to get Legends Arceus DLC, and that would be the main bulk of content for the year, with an announcement for the brand new generation to come near the end of the year or maybe the beginning of this year, with Generation 9, Scarlet and Violet as we now know, coming in 2023. But I was wrong, we got it all last year, which tells me that this year, we're not getting a new generation, we just got that, we're not getting DLC for Legends Arceus, since they have since iterated on their formula with Scarlet and Violet, we have the next mainline game in the series, we did get some free downloadable content for Legends Arceus at the start of 2022, but it wasn't anything major, it wasn't a major addition and expansion into a new area, it was just some added story content, some added things to do around the region, some added quests, and some added extras to the game that we didn't have previously. It wasn't anything major. So we are primed, we're not getting remakes or anything like that, at least not from Game Freak this year, to get DLC by Game Freak for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. There is a variety of things we could see in this DLC. I think it'll get announced at Pokemon Day next month, although we did get the official announcement of DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield in January of 2020. So who knows when we could really see it. So I wanna get this prediction video out as soon as possible. But there have been a ton of hints, a ton of things suggested to us from the lore of Scarlet and Violet, which could point us in the direction of its DLC. Of course, in the top corner of the Paldea region, there is a part of the map that is un- uh, travelable to, you cannot get there, and it is sectioned off differently on your mini-map than the rest of the borders of the world. Once you go into the ocean of Paldea, you can't go any further at a certain point, except for this little part on the map, which is sectioned off in the same way that Area Zero is kind of sectioned off before you're able to access it. This is leading a lot of people to speculate that it's going to be the area that will be opened up for us to explore in Scarlet and Violet DLC. And what that area is, 
a lot of people think it's going to have references and connections to the Kalos region. Now, of course, in the real world, France and Spain are very close to each other on the European continent. They line up pretty well with where these two regions would be geographically to each other. And this little chunk of land that we're getting hinted towards in the map of Paldea is where you would expect to find France in the real world. Pokemon regions are very strongly based on real world locations. So many of the first few regions that Game Freak developed were based on different parts of Japan. And when you look at the geography of those regions, namely Johto, Kanto, and Sinnoh, they are pretty well in relation to one another geographically, as are the parts of Japan that they are based on. This is what Game Freak does with their game design. So having Kalos and Paldea close to each other canonically would make a world of sense. And if we're going to go back to the Kalos region or explore the outskirts of the Kalos region in some way, putting it here and adding it in DLC would make a ton of sense. Now, before going any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also always greatly appreciated. Now, it's not just the geographic location that has a lot of people thinking we're going to make a return to Kalos. It is references. It is parts of the story that seem to point towards things from the sixth generation of Pokemon. Roaring Moon, the paradox form of Salamence, the paradox Pokemon that Salamence got an iteration for, makes reference to another phenomenon in the world of Pokemon that makes it look similar to Roaring Moon. That, of course, is Salamence's mega evolution, Mega Salamence. It looks a lot like Roaring Moon. There's more. There's more. Floet in Area Zero brings up so many question marks for the community. This massive crater in the center of the Paldea region where we see Floet, AZ's Pokemon, AZ being the character in Kalos' lore who launched the ultimate weapon in an attempt to end the wars of his region. Where did the ultimate weapons blast, which did come back down to Earth, land? Could it be the crater that is Area Zero, an area geographically that is close to the Kalos region, full of mysteriously changed Pokemon, portals ripping through time and space itself? So much so that we're getting past and future forms, something that we might have gotten hinted to in Generation 6 with AZ's Floet, a different form of Floet. Now, you see a ton of Floet appearing in an area of the Paldea region which has alternate forms of Pokemon. A smaller bit, but Area Zero. This location, AZ, Area Zero. See the connection here? You see what some people are drawing upon? There is a lot going on. DLC, of course, could also include the third legendary, which has been hinted at in the books that you find throughout the research labs in the region and in Area Zero and the lore that we learn about at the climax of the game. We are undoubtedly going to see this third legendary at some point and its connection to terrestrializing and to Paradox Pokemon and how this web of question marks ties together is going to be the focus of the DLC. This is exciting, and I think we're going to see it in two parts. I think we're going to get a land expansion piece of the DLC where we get to travel to this region up in the, uh, the northeast of the Paldea region. I think we're going to get that. And I think there's going to be references to the Kalos region. I don't think it's going to be Kalos. If it is, I would be absolutely floored. I would be stunned. I would be so excited. I'd be willing to pay anything for the expansion as Kalos is a region that is solely underdeveloped. But I think we're going to see the land first, going to get to explore new areas of somewhere that is south of Kalos, but northeast of Paldea. It'll have its own sub region name, hopefully, and that'll be a new area for us to explore, hopefully with some new Pokemon or some new forms. And maybe that's why we only got a couple Paldean regional variants in the base game, Paldean Wooper being one of them. That's what's going to come first. And then at the end of the year, or maybe it'll get flipped, who knows, we're going to get the story piece to this DLC. Brand new story content involving all of the major characters, Arvin and others that we experienced in the main game, fleshing out what is going on here. What is the deal with terrestrializing? How does it connect to the paradox phenomenon? What is going on with this mysterious third legendary and the 
paradox forms of legendary Pokemon of the past that we saw in the books, in the Violet Book and the Scarlet Book. Are we going to see those Pokemon or other paradox forms of older legendaries? This is what I think the DLC is going to do. I think Game Freak got it right with Sword and Shield when they split their DLC into two different releases. We had the Crown Tundra and we had the Isle of Armor, not in that order, of course. But I think they're going to do something similar to that this year to fill this year with content. Something in the summer and something in the fall, maybe a little bit earlier, who knows. That's what I think for DLC. As for the rest of Pokemon's year, we're going to get some kind of spin-off. Will it be Detective Pikachu 2, which we know has been in development for a long time, and we've gotten some quieter updates in recent months saying that the project is still alive. Is that something we could see? I think it's entirely possible. Will we see what I have been personally hoping for for three years now? I'm going to predict it again because I want it really bad. Another Pokemon Mystery Dungeon remake done in the same art style as Mystery Dungeon Explore, uh, Mystery Dungeon DX, Re Rescue Team DX, that very long and complicated name of Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team we got a couple years back on the Switch. I would love it for Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky. Explorers of Sky is one of my favorite video games of all time. The story that you can experience in Time, Darkness, and Sky is up there with some of the best RPGs of our time. It is way out of left field for a Pokemon game. The story it tells is gripping. The characters that it introduces you to are emotionally charged, full of different motivations, and come together to just pull at your heartstrings. So if we could get a remake for those games on the Switch, all together with all the extra content that Sky added as a third version, I think that would be excellent. That's my big prediction for the year and what I think those things could flesh out to be. What do you guys think? Are you looking forward to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC in 2023? And are you excited about potential spin-off games that we might get as well? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you never miss future content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.